<gasps> Where is everyone? There we come. Hey everyone, welcome to Off Matter. My name's Adam. I'm Tyler. <laughs> and I'm Haley. I don't know why I'm last. I don't know what's going on here today. There are a few reasons. I'm usually because, first. There's a few reasons. It's because you sat down late. <laughs> That's would true. Be, would be the primary reason. I am the reason we are late. Things are going to look a little different today. I just have to, to pre-warn you of that. And that might be because, might just be because we are Sat away next to each other. Sorry. And also <laughs> sat next to each other. I'm going to want to bring this a little bit closer, okay? Okay. okay. Forgive oh, the wobble. Oh, Forgive the wobble. Oh, oh, it's an earthquake. No, it's not. It's just a table. Adam and Haley had to do a visual document to prove that they were married for the courts. <laughs> uh, <laughs> still all part of the green so That's why this is happening. <laughs> <laughs> had to have some pictures of us together somewhere on vacation uh yeah so welcome today today we're going to be doing a little off mana ranking though we won't be bringing up the the rankings you're just gonna to have to memorize the characters that we talk about today and where we actually end up ranking them and delight in our beautiful faces right? <clears throat> we'll add it in we'll add it in post so in the recording you won't even see me seeing this we're just gonna go straight to the first character pretty much after the welcome and the maybe maybe we'll leave the shake in there. We'll see. <laughs> um, Earthquakes in the cat skills, folks. <laughs> today we're gonna to be ranking some everyday base characters. Today we're gonna to be ranking characters that hatch an everyday. <clears throat> Specifically townsfolk, because we've done demons, we've done minions, we've done outsiders. So now we're on to the townsfolk. There are quite a few townsfolk though, which is why we're doing it in this way. So these are the each night. Each day. We are. We Each are, day. <laughs> we are breaking it up slightly. Oh my God, I've just adjusted the camera again like an idiot. Just leave the camera where it is. Yes. Just leave Shaky the camera camera's not fun. Leave you the camera make is. people nauseous. I'll shake in tandem with you so that it makes it look like <laughs> it's the it's the viewer, right? It can't be us. Everybody's shaking. So, uh, yeah, so the each night or each day rolls are often thought of as the most powerful and fun of the townsfolk roles. Why? Because they're doing something all the time. They're always acting. They're always picking somebody or or saying a thing. Or We're going to rank how effective they are, how fun they are to play. I'm assuming that's our criteria or whatever loose designation, just like, ah, I got a feeling. That's how we normally do it. Uh, so we're going to be doing that. Yeah. And then you're going to memorize it. And spit it back to us because there's going to be a quiz afterwards. We're going to ask you, how did we rank these? Which ones did we even rank? And you're going to say, it's these. And I go, okay. Well, we've that got sounds some, right. We've got some good ones. Up first is going to be, we're going to do this a little bit alphabetical because that's kind of our thing. That's my favorite. That's kind it's of what we do here. To Tyler's great <laughs> joy is we'd like to rank things alphabetical. Uh, we're going to be yeah. going Chambermaid, Dreamer, Empath, Vow Girl, Fortune Teller, Gambler. I believe are the first six that we're going to be doing today. Is that six? Can, we, can you count this I, test? Go that is it. six. Yes. Good job. Well, if you live an alphabetical lifestyle, you don't do a lot of counting. <laughs> I mean, know. you got to get do decimal up in there as well. This is that's right. Yeah. That's do what I, I, ha I have. A I have a specific number attached to each role in Clock Tower. <laughs> that's how I would use. <laughs> Chambermaid. Each night, choose two alive players, not yourself. Because why would you pick yourself? You learn how many woke tonight due to their ability. Chambermaid comes from the Bad Moon Rising playset. Also comes with a Kevin Costner action figure. He's in the Bad Moon Rising playset as well. In any case, um, in the context of Bad Moon Rising, the Chambermaid is either the first or second best info role in that particular set. But overall, it is maybe not as informative as some other roles in the each night, each day category. <laughs> uh, you're right. It's pretty good in BMR. Outside of that, I find it quite boring. Out of that, I find this one quite a boring character. If Even if I draw it in BMI out the bag, I'm going to be quite bored about the fact that I pulled this one. Um, I like the Chambermaid. I like it as a bluff. I like it um, as a way to get information from other players, right? So I go pick two players. Hey, I got a one last night, right? Did you wake up? I did not. I go to this other player. Did you wake up? No, I didn't. So I have actually gotten information from them or caught them in a lie or a bluff or, um, you know, if I'm bluffing Chambermaid, I've learned about them. I think it's a very effective demon bluff. I think it's also an effective townsfolk. But you're right. In certain custom scripts, the it, it depends on how well the bluffs align to the minion abilities or to the uh, demon ability, right? So if, if the demon gets sniped on night one, I've seen a lot of games get upended by a chambermaid. So I think that does make it pretty effective. 
right? So the the demon claims something that wakes up every night. They get picked on um, on night one. You just moved the camera. They didn't wake up. <laughs> Sorry, <Yeah>. Tyler. <laughs> camera wars I'm, I'm just i'm not lit very well and adam so is fun. lit nicely so. you got a lot of beautiful natural light i think in that room is that better we do this house has a lot of windows oh my god so tyler yes <laughs> you are very right the chambermaid will uh, help catch a player out in line i think chat's saying this too it serves more as a construction of what you can safely bluff as as evil i don't feel like the chambermaid is quite a safe bluff as evil i feel like the chambermaid I mean, the chambermaid has a one in three chance of getting this information right, right? It's either going to be zero, one, or two people that woke up last night. So you've got a one in three chance of being able to bluff it, at least to make some people potentially trust you. But I see a lying chambermaid get caught out and have it twist on them that they're the ones lying, as I do, as them being able to, to point out that a player is lying, right? And stick the knife in someone else. I don't think it's a great bluff for that reason. I think you are likely going to get killed if you don't get your bluffs right, especially if you have, especially in something like BMR where you've got trust created via the gambler you know gossip grandmother there's trust being created tea ladies etc so if you don't get your bluffs right you're gonna you're gonna end up being backfired and executed because of it mm, i think you would yeah, maybe it's... have to have a uh like worldview already planned out as as an evil team in order to successfully bluff this right there's something that you're going to try and push on the the town um to believe We'll say that I put Chambermaid as an A for the, for the criteria that we have. I, I obviously have a higher opinion of it than than uh, Adam does, and I think I I was in the game just the other day. I like BMR a lot more than I think uh, maybe other incorrect. People do. I love okay. BMR. Do not put me in you that. Sure, bucket. do you have a bias for all the S and B roles? I like BMR as a script. Doesn't say. mean doesn't mean the characters are in it are the best. Well, they have to be the best if they're in it. Oh, you can you can have a can bunch of med you can have well a bunch together. of mediocre characters in a game to create an amazing script. Yeah. In fact, well, so because we we're, we're doing these, um, we're gonna have a script made up of like all of the S tier and E tier characters. We should do the opposite as well and see if that rings <laughs> true. <laughs> that's very true. So, oh man, that's that's when I, the pit hag and bigger board is shine according to Tyler. <laughs> 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 I, I will say that the uh, the um, chambermaid, I was in a game not just a week ago or so in which the chambermaid info blew the whole game wide open. Didn't even have to trust the chambermaid. In fact, didn't. Um, but their information, once they were confirmed as a good player, uh, meant that we had I had everything that I needed to know who the demon and the two minions were. And that's one piece of information along with some double claims. So, I mean, you uh, I thought that was pretty effective. I've won as a bluffing chambermaid because, oh, my information was bad. Oh, I, you're the goon? You were the goon all along? I can't believe it. Why did I pick you so many? Why didn't you tell me? Then now you're pivoting away from why your information's bad. Nobody seems to nobody seemed to notice that they were also picked by the innkeeper, so I should have gotten good information. Anyway, so all of that, I think, you know, those those were my opinions of the, of the chambermaid. But I put it in an A tier. A tier, okay. really? Wow. Yeah. Well, for the context of the script. Yeah. Uh, for the for the for, I thought it more fun to play than you do, and I put it in a lot of customs and see it do pretty well. Yeah. So just so you know, Tyler, if you ever randomly assign tokens and it falls on me being the chambermaid, feel free to change me to Eddie. Switch else. it out. Switch it <laughs> out. Will, you can give me chef, washerwoman, anything else instead. Just not chambermaid, mm -hmm. thank you. Uh, all right. So I think I think I would say this is a B. Haley, do you have an opinion okay. on this one? Uh, no, so far I've not given my opinions on okay. where things actually place in the ranking. I just like to speak up every now and then and tell everybody that they're wrong. <laughs> All right, so let's let's move on to an actual S tier. So wait, where did you put it? B. B. Did mm -hmm. Tyler agree to B? No. Is it supposed to, agree to, to be? Something? Aren't you supposed to sort of eventually okay. agree? I mean, seeing as I <laughs> spoke last, I feel like that was the decider. <laughs> But, you know. That was how the time breaks, huh? <laughs> that's how, that's how the I'm going to say everything last from now on. <laughs> what are you? Uh, C tier. See, see for the chain no, for Dreamer. Guy. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Let's move along. Uh, I, no, I'm no, fine no, 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 with no. putting it at B for now, but I think we should, we should, we can revisit that and pull it up if we look at some of these other roles and go, uh, maybe it's a little bit better. But I think, I think, yeah, I think, I think there's going to be a lot of roles that we're going to talk about that are better, in my opinion is part of the issue but i do absolutely hear what you're saying i think it is an a tier for bmr 
because of the information it can help good. I don't think it's a great bluff in character. I think even even in your example, Tyler, you got lucky that people didn't pick up on your lights, right? Is what you just said. They didn't pick up on the innkeeper should have selected the goon as well, right? Even you got to move that, it fast. That's even, part of play. You got to keep keep things moving along. <laughs> just like this podcast. The chambermaid has been has been uh, conditionally put in the B category. Okay. Conditionally, I say. All right. Thank you, Tyler. Let's move on to the dreamer then. Dreamer. <laughs> Each night, choose a player, not yourself or travelers. You learn one good evil, one good, oh my God. Each night. <laughs> You're real good at this. Fucking hell, shut up. <laughs> Dreamer. Each night, choose a player, not yourself or a traveler. You learn one good and one evil character, one of which is correct. There you go, nailed it. Nailed it in first nailed take. Nailed it. All right, Dreamer, do you, shall I start or do you want to start, Ty? Uh, go ahead, you seem to... Viewed as an S tier. I I think I think the dreamer is an S tier. In terms of its ability to help good, I think it is an S tier. I think you find out very quickly. I think Dreamer is one of those roles that helps identify if it's sat next to a no, a no dasher that it's a no dasher game. You laughing shakes <laughs> the camera. <laughs> Sorry. It's so we have some people in chat that might Don't be experience joy in this house with us right now. So Yuma oh, okay. said uh, you look like you're in uh, Haley and Adam look no. like they're in a mansion that only got to eat yeah, yeah, two yeah. days ago and now not too bad is saying the dreamer is the English muffin of rolls which is a direct reference to our breakfast this morning and has absolutely nothing to do with this podcast thank you for bringing it up then <laughs> you were complaining at me laughing so I had to explain the laugh because I was not laughing Fair at enough. the conversation okay so yeah. I can't even remember exactly yeah, where funny. I was I can't remember exactly where that's I was. funny the dreamer is S tier I do think it is, in terms of how it helps good, I think it is S tier. It's even worse for bluffing, I think, than the chambermaid is, right? Um, but uh, I think- Significantly so. I think, I think for its own ability to help good is S tier. When you classify it with everything else in terms of being able to, um, uh, sorry, when you try and put it into a category where it's got to stand up on its own for bluffs, its ability to dominate other scripts, custom scripts, its ability, it's it's not going to be great for other scripts a lot of the time if your script isn't set up to be able to cope with it, being able to get false information on a consistent basis. But it is probably an A tier for that reason. The fact that it's an S tier, amazing role for good to have on their side uh, when it's actually in play, balances out about the fact that it's not great for bluffing and not great on a lot of scripts, brings it just down to an A for me. But it's real fun to play. It's real fun to play. I mean, you got to remember everything. It's much harder in person to play. It's much more fun to play in person, I think, because you've actually got to try and remember. Wait, this person was either this or this. This person was either this. Or... There's a lot of information thrown at you, which is a lot easier to, to track and manage and keep mental gymnastics of in, when you're playing online. Yeah. And so when I say it's uh, a lot of fun to play, I only play in person. I very rarely play online games. So I'm specifically talking about the in-person experience. S and V colon much better in person. <laughs> it's um, true. <laughs> so anyway, no, I yeah, people love S and V online. I know, but I'm not one of them. I like it in person a lot. So I can imagine that be the case for the dreamer. Uh, I can't disagree with anything that you're saying, so I won't. I'm not going to make false controversy. There's no real need to do that. I have better things to do with my time <laughs> than be pick a things. fight, die on a hill I don't need to die on. I'm just going to continue to say phrases for things that I'm not doing currently. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would, I think effectively, as a, if you're looking in terms of effectiveness and on the script, it's it's an S. I, I just don't love it. And it pulls that, I mean, I, I understand playing it is, pro, I've played it. It's fun. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. It's really great. Dream is great. So A? But I don't think, I don't think it does very well on a lot of custom scripts. You have to be very, very, very careful. But once you put it on, because then um, it's just, it can be pretty game over. Yeah, for sure. Yep. I think it is I think it is a, a great tool on SMV for sure, especially. I think it fits in really well. A lot of misinformation, a lot of misclassification on there happens. So I think it's great on there. But um, I think you're right. Overall, it's not great, which is what I think brings it down from an S tier overall to an A for me. I think I think when you look at that, it's an S tier for the, for the things it does amazingly. At B tier for everything else, so it's an A tier in the middle for me. All right. Hey, would you like to do the next decision. one? Oh, sure. Yes, because I like this one. Uh, Empath. Each night you learn how many of your two alive neighbors are evil. 
That is each and every night, including the first night. I just realized again, I picked the longest line of fucking text to read out. For the, you did. For the character. Well done. I wish I had picked Empath. <laughs> uh, all right. So I like the Empath. So why do you like the Empath then, Ailey? Uh, because it's fun to kill your neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. That's it. <laughs> Normally, uh, we uh, we have Adam and Haley on location. They're tracking a storm. There's a storm <laughs> front moving in through their area, and they're going to be standing out in the weather pretty soon for CNN or MSNBC, somebody, right? Um, and because of that, they weren't able to bring the tier list graphic along. So we're going to fix it in post. So far, we have put the chambermaid uh, conditionally, probationally in the B category, the dreamer in the A category category and now we're on to the empath which has the shortest text so far <laughs> to adam's chagrin all right uh that's your recap so yeah Haley likes it because it gives a justification to kill our neighbors mm -hmm. i'm down for that unless yes. they get zeros i'll probably keep I... Them alive. I don't know maybe i'd kill them just yeah. to see what Tyler, changes i spoke a lot last time let's see if you can say things i agree with this time yeah the empath is effective as a townsfolk role when it's in play, right? Um, it has a dynamic that you can use to either – you can either give people true information about what you receive. You can give people false information about what you you know, what you receive. You can go after your neighbors. You cannot go after – you can use it as a basically a starting info role and go, on night one I learned that both my neighbors are good boys and girls, right? And that could be, and that's effective. If you just learn that, that's effective. But the fact that you get to keep on learning if you kill those fools, that's effective, right? It's such an effective role that it created a meta that said, I'm going to poison my demon's neighbors just in case they're the empath. So it's fun to play, fun to bluff, um, has effective information, does its job well. There's no like built in misinformation. People have to go after you. We're going to drunk them, we're going to lie about them. We're gonna we're gonna malign them, talk bad about their mamas, do whatever it takes to throw the empire off this game. So I think it's an S tier role. Oh, interesting. I wasn't mm -hmm. expecting to come down with that, Ty. I mean, obviously everything you were saying was pretty much positive about it. I the one the problem that I have with the empire, and this is the only problem I have with the empire, looking at its base script of trouble brewing, is I think I drunk the empire more than any other character in the game. In, I think is the honest truth, and I think it's also what lends to that that the matter that empaths don't exist because it's a great bluffer evil. It's an easy bluffer evil to turn around and say one of my neighbors is evil. It's also a really a common character to drunk in my opinion, which which it looks like Unreal Twenty Five Mil is agreeing with me on there. I don't know if you said it before me, but if you did say it before me, you're right. And if you agree with me, thank you. <laughs> uh, I, like I say, I just I think that's me. That is my only problem with the empath is that. You know, you sometimes have to junk it. Oh shit! The way that the way the diet, the tokens have fallen, you've got an empath, then you've got a scarlet woman, then you've got a demon or something like that, right? You know, like it's going to be game over if I don't make this the drunk. So that's my that is my only problem with it. It's and, and it's and what I'm saying is the problem with it is it's too powerful in some situations. Sure. Which is, means it's sure. got to be S tier, right? <laughs> it's OP. I do. I will say that in the context of its set, it is, um, and that was part of the criteria, right? It is dulled by two of the outsiders, right? So it is a super effective role uh, with the recluse and the drunk that make it a little less effective. The poisoner is a minion on the script makes it a little bit less effective. Um, so I could see you saying it doesn't always do great in custom scripts, but I mean, it's pretty stable. It doesn't have a huge fluctuation other than seating arrangement. So. And the spy is on. I forgot about that. I should have mm -hmm. said that. Um, the spy is on that set as well. So there's a lot of things in trouble brewing that, you know, uh, mess around with alignment. And all of those can make the empath a more, um, a role that plays and slots a little bit better. But I think it's an S tier. That's, I mean, we got to put something there, right? Yeah. I mean, I can't think of, I'm, I'm not looking at what's coming up next, but I'd be shocked if there's anything coming up next that deserves S tier more than empath. There's a nice short sentence coming up next. <gasps> really? Yeah, one. you want to do that one, Adam? It's super short. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. You have to say asterisks, though. Are you ready for that? Okay, let me remember. Let me also just practice. Also, not the first night. Asterisk. <laughs> asterisk. 
<laughs> no, that's wrong. <laughs> Asterisk. No. Just say star. Wrong. Just say star. Got it. Thank Just you. Just say not the first night. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Flower Girl. First night. Not the first night. Every fucking hell. <laughs> 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 oh, <shit>. Great start. <laughs> Flower girl. Each night. Asterisk. Asterisk? Asterisk. Why did you put this into my head now? <laughs> you said you were going to practice. I didn't. Say. Oh my God. Why did you put this into my head now? Tyler did. Tyler put it into your head. Oh, I'm so still blaming you for asterisk. everything. All right. Flower girl. Each night, except the first night, you learn if the demon voted today. If a demon voted today. What did I say? The demon. I said the if demon. The demon. Yeah. Oh, and that can matter. That's old school, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Fucking wording changes. <laughs> Haley, do you have thoughts of in person Flower Girl? Um, I bet it's different from my thoughts of online Flower Girl. I don't think I've had to play Flower Girl. I think um, you'd be good at it, though, if you did. Probably. Yeah, I don't really have any thoughts on it. I don't know. Hem's got a mind like a steel trap on first remembering the sub. sub. If I've played things, I've not played Flower Girl, so yeah. I don't have so any. I, th- I think you'd be fine with it. But um, yeah, so I'm going to talk then, Tyler. Screw you for not asking my opinion first. Asterix. <laughs> <laughs> Asterix. Why can't I not say that? It's like Ed. It's like the other week. I was messing up saying Gabriel for so much that I got yeah. Ed wrong when I actually introduced him. Ed? <laughs> like two letters. <laughs> <laughs> Three, but yeah. Um, all right. So anyway, your flower girl. Did you skip Exorcist? We left it off the list. We need to go. We'll, go, we'll double back. We'll be back. I think it's, worry. I think, so it's a good point, but I will say that you're right. You may have put it under protection. It roles. is. We have a protection set that it falls under, I believe. Or poison set. I can't. Poison's protection, I think, is what it falls under. Um, yeah, for the terms of the script so flower girl. flower girl I think the flower girl is great I think the flower girl is very useful I think I am a big fan of a flower girl test on day one where you have everyone vote on the nomination uh, so I am a big big fan of it I think it is I think it is great in SMV I think if you set it up right I think you've got to have the right player sorry let me phrase this if the town agrees to set it up right for, for a hard test, I think it's great to find out what the information is that they're getting out of it. Get a Vortox check out the way with quickly. Um, but you're right. You then suddenly, if we have a stressful day or a busy day where we have five or six nominations and different people voting, it's a nightmare. And that's what evil needs to push the game towards, in my opinion. So I think it is evil for evil to play against it if they realize it's in play and need to need to muddy its info. But I do think that it is. But I do think that it is uh, important and I think it's a great character to have in the game. Okay, so all of my views of the Flower Girl are shaded by a the way it was played or the way it was played around or about the first year that we were maybe six months or whatever we were playing online because it was a lot of vote marshalling. These six people vote. Mm-hmm. Right. These, the, everyone vote. These people only can vote. I think that's counter fun. I understand that that probably that's that's an unwritten rule. That is a meta that developed. It shades my opinion of it. Um, it is effective information. Um, on the, you know, unless the demon has shifted hands, in which case it's a little bit less effective. Uh, so I mean, for me, it's a. In terms of fun, um, it gets weighted down based off the way that it is normally or that it was played for a long time. I'm sure, once again, in person or if people aren't trying to control who votes and, well, you don't look good because you you voted when I told you not to. Well, you're not my boss. I have a boss. <laughs> I don't listen to them. <laughs> like you get fired. Wait, I think I'm exposing things about myself. I don't need to. Anyway, uh so, yeah, I just for me the flower girl is just a bee because I just don't like I don't like seeing it in a game. Yeah, I, I think could... it suffers from some of that in person as well. Thinking about games that I, I have not played it, but that games that I've been in where it's been played, and it does suffer a bit of that in person. Like from you to you can vote today, and nobody else. Um, but I don't know. Yeah, I think it can it's... make a wonky meta sometimes. Yeah, I think I think so. You're telling me basically it's a role that suffers from having a poor group of players or an unsupportive 
yeah, people better, that forget please. about rule four. I think you're going to, I think there's going to be other roles you're going to run into that you have that problem if that's the case. I don't think we should. Well, I, but we had this argument about uh, uh, resistance Avalon or your opinions of that game or a secret Hitler. And it's like, if I told you I never played with a group that mathed out the optimum way to play secret Hitler, right? We were too, you know, we were just laughing it up and enjoying pointing at each other and calling him a, a fascist lizard, right? Then. You go, well, I mean, that doesn't make the game better. You go, it can be mapped out. And I think the Flower Girl creates an environment in which that is there is an optimum way to do it. And if that person, if that player wants to go away from it and, and be 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 nice and say, yeah, I'm just going to count who votes. I'm not going to make people do that. Then I'm, I'm, I am grateful. Uh, I'm, I'm glad to see that be the case. Uh, I just think that it, it, it lends itself well to a, well, for a Flower Girl, we need... You know, you can't vote. You already, you know, these people already voted today. We got somebody on the block, you know, and um, anyway, that's, those are, those are my thoughts. You're right. It, it, it is shaded. I led by saying that I was biased. Now I got to be is for biased. That's I'm, why I put it in that category. I'm okay with it being B. Mm. I'm, I'm okay with it being B. I think it probably deserves to be slightly higher, but I'm okay with it being B. Yeah. I think, I think it's one of the few characters that gets us to help hard confirm like four tops and certain demons, so I think it deserves to be ranked a little higher. But other than that, I'm good with it being a B. Yeah, I mean, I think I think in terms of its, um, in terms of its set, it's great. Obviously, because there's um, a lot of the a lot of the misinformation on the set is either localized or slow to form. We talked about this on S and D a fair amount, um, and then it does the vortex check, where now you just flip your answer from yes to no or no to yes and you still get good information yeah mm -hmm. i would say so knife and i would i mean there's so many aspects of of sex and violence where i go it, it's just dynamic and a lot more fun in live and in person than i find it to be online yeah but i know other people disagree with me and i i, I want them to be represented and i think no. adam loudly represents that point of view of uh being a mad puzzle solver what solves at midnight Wow. Is that it's a okay. We don't need to represent those people. Is that a compliment? I'm not I, sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> I can't tell. It's a, it's a backhanded insult. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, can I read the next one? Because then I'll have had both the trouble room ones in this, yeah. in this little six. Uh, why can I not just read it from the screen? Because I didn't want to have to keep touching the screen. Oh, I see. Shaky cam. I should just know this one as well. Each night. Oh, wait. You want to know what the role is? That's right. Uh, fortune teller. Each night. We she, should actually have them guess the role based on the text. Because they'll be like, oh my yeah. god, I got it! It's a fortune tower! <laughs> yeah, right. should have done that. Oh well. Uh, each night. Choose two players. You learn if either is a demon. There is a good player that registers as a demon to you. There is no asterisk. Mm -mm. So no every asterisk. night. So what do you think about the fortune teller scene as you wanted to read this one? Oh, I like the fortune teller as well. It's fun. I think, uh, again, it creates metas for storytellers. This is where they make the red herring a specific character each time, or like the fortune teller is always their own red herring. And like groups can fall into that kind of trap, which could make it a little bit unfun. I think if you have a storyteller that doesn't um, fluctuate from their own meta. Okay, interesting. But otherwise, I like that. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I, I think Trouble Brew is a perfect game. So everything on it is great, including the Baron. So I, what I, what it's funny that you were going there because what I thought I thought you were about to completely steal my thunder and say what I was going to say is that. The fortune teller is one of the roles that makes Blood on the Clock Tower what Blood on the Clock Tower is, and that mm -hmm. it gives the storyteller agency to help shape the, the the narrative about what's going on. Thanks to the red herring, it is it is another one of those few roles that are truly in the game that really allows the storyteller to be a storyteller instead of just a narrator of what's happening in the game. That's true. I think from a storyteller perspective, it's great to have that in your pocket in order to control the game. But I think. If you are an inexperienced storyteller who has maybe settled into one pl one play one way of running your games, it can be uh, to the detriment of the fun of the other players. 
But that's just got something that comes with time, honestly. Rewind says the metas exist for a reason. The red herring doesn't affect the game as much of the character is as much of it's on a character that dies early, which is why people suspect it being on Soldier Mayor Saint, etc. Which which is also partially why evil to players claim those roles as well, because they won't die early. So it's the same thing. Rewind. Yeah. I don't think it's just because you don't want it on a character that dies early. I don't think that's necessarily an issue. But I do think that it's um but I do think it's there because I do think people put it on those characters because those characters are quite often claimed by evil. Or if you have another powerful information gathering role, like when mm. you have we we were running games before Origin, it was we had an empath, they were set next to an evil or a couple evils. I I don't remember the whole layout, but they were they had good information and um they became the red herring for the fortune teller in those games. Um because it makes people question, are, is that information coming from a, a potential evil, potential demon, you know, those types of things. But it, it, I've seen people meta storytellers incorrectly where they go, of course they made this player, yeah. made me the red herring because he knows that I'll, you'll check me on night one. and Or yep. uh, I've seen it done, you know, fortune tellers a lot of times pick their neighbor. So, okay, I'll put it on the neighbor. So mm -hmm. we get a, but, but, you know, picking the red herring early is not always good for the evil team no, it can right. be it can be really bad for the evil team uh because we go ahead and execute that person they're fine to go down with you know and now all of a sudden it's like well it's open season whoever i pick next they're probably a demon um i love the i love the fortune teller in the context of trouble brewing i love it from the storyteller perspective i love it on custom scripts because it's got built-in misinformation while it's getting good information at the same time um it is um uh, I think it was succinctly and well put by Adam that it makes Clock Tower what it is. Yeah. I think it makes it a different game from another information social deduction gathering game. We're not moderators. Well, I say we, uh, but I mean, storytellers are not moderators, right? They are making choices. They're making decisions. They're, they're creating a game state, a story that is uh, unfolding before the player's eyes. So I think uh, for that reason, it's, in my opinion, it's an S tier role. Would you Great. Agree? Yeah, obviously. Yeah. yeah totally. And even though I was uh, sort of critical about it from the get-go, I, I agree um, with everything that you've both said. And I would place it as an S tier. I just think that if you're a storyteller, um, a new storyteller, just be careful. Um, I mean, so well, my well, one of the things I learned... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say my tip for a new storyteller would be something I have often done is even though Tyler just said it's not always good for evil, uh, don't place the four, don't place the red herring token red red herring red herring token red yeah. herring yes. token it is a token oh my god red herring yes, yes. <laughs> you're to that point where words have no meaning <laughs> the microdosing for the last two days <laughs> uh, where the red herring token you can, play, you can not place it on the first couple of days forget token integrity and just see who they pick the first night and pick one of those two players to be the red herring instead. Or see who they pick the second night if it's not the same two players to pick one of those people instead. That's how I've done it often in the past, just to make sure that there is misinformation out there happening. I believe that the one of the most difficult things about the fortune teller is when they're drunk or poisoned. Because I felt the urge, you know, with a drunk or poisoned fortune teller to maybe go, go to a, a yes pick on a bad choice a little too soon. Um, and then that makes the game actually much easier for good to win. A drunk poison fortune teller is pretty effective, you know, because they're like, well, I got a bunch of yeses. Let's, I'm probably drunk. Let's, but at least kill these fools anyway. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> so you move along. Um, I mean, I, I, I think it is a tough one. It is probably the toughest role. I'll have to do my think real quick and make sure I'm right on what I'm saying. It is one of the tougher roles on Trouble Brewing to adjudicate and to make good storyteller decisions. So you're right on that front, Haley. Right? I mean, you gotta you gotta make the right calls um, on on setup. Um, I don't know that everybody's gonna agree with uh, Adam's floating token, but if it hasn't been chosen, if the red if, if if he's not going back and putting the red herring on a role that was already picked, a player that was already picked, then it should be fine. And I'm sure Stephen would agree. Yeah, as long as it doesn't make it unfun, right? That's the whole point. It's yeah. Be fun. If Stephen doesn't, my video agree. and audio aren't synced. What's happening? 
It looks fine on my side, Ty. So, but yeah. who knows what what's happening when it goes up to the cloud? <laughs> uh, so Tyler Inter- should do in the last Toronto, time. In Toronto, it's street. different. Yeah. Toronto is a different cloud in Toronto. So who knows what's happening there? Yeah, that's not just one cloud. No, Tyler. Mm-hmm. Do you want to take this one? Oh yeah, sure. Each night, asterisk. What Choose is it, though, Tyler? That we're doing. Uh, we're I'm guessing now. Guess. We're okay, we just cool. Yeah. About this. All right, then yeah. fair enough. <laughs> Hey, 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 just because you messed up all the reads doesn't mean you get to interrupt me. I was on a flow. I had it going. <laughs> Try again, Tyler. <laughs> Each night. Sorry, Tyler, just, what was that? Choose a player and guess their character. <laughs> See how thematic this is, that they're going to guess the character? If you guess wrong, and this is for you too, chat, if you guess wrong, you die. I'll kill you. <laughs> Tell me what the role is. Such violence for Gambler. for lunchtime. Well, that's, the, that's the role. All right. See, see, now they're in, now they're into it. Knife was it. quick there. You barely yeah, finished nice. reading. Wow. He had it pre-typed because he knew how alphabetic order worked. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> shit. <laughs> he had, he did it on stream. She said each night, gambler. Must be that. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So I don't know who to go first, but I'm gonna say I'm not a big fan of the gambler. And if we were going to pick any of these to be C tier, I would not hesitate if you want to say this is C tier. I feel like he's being facetious right now. No, no. Um, I think Ty- You don't really don't like the gambler. I really don't, I'm not a big fan of the gambler. I'm not a big fan of the gambler in the terms that the way I like to play is far too chaos for the gambler to ever get true information from me. And I like people that play the same way as me. Therefore, the gambler is never going to be useful in a game that I'm in if they're trying to get information off of me. I would. I am like Brittany in the sense that you know what? You're the gambler, are you? Then I'm the fortune teller. Go ahead and die and prove to me you are the gambler, not me prove to you that I'm the fortune teller. <laughs> so for that reason, scaredy gambler is what you're being called in chat. Yeah, well, I did that. <laughs> so yeah, I did that on stream because I'd never really seen anyone do it before, and that's how I go. But it worked out, right? You ended up picking the demon. You said you said uh, I think it was Madeline. Madeline is the puka. And, was it? Yeah, I can't remember what demon it was. It was. Yeah. But yes, you're right. It was something like that. Yeah, at that point, town wanted me to kill myself, so I was like, "All right, then let's try and guess who the, who a demon is." Yeah, uh, I have a higher opinion of the gambler. I think most people think it's more fun to play than than you do. But I, can, and, um, I don't need everybody to be like me. It's one of the great things about diversity of life. I don't need everybody to play like I do. You um, should try it sometime, Tyler. It's great fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well i you know when i get to leave and go to a commune during a pandemic i'll that's what i'll do i'll be like hey does everybody think like me we do indeed yes sir yes sir okay great three bags full um yeah i think it i think uh will sq has a a good point which is it's a great way to go around and gather roles kind of like a juggler in that sense right you can go around and say uh hey what would you like to be gambled as and you at least get claims if that's not your strong suit of getting claims otherwise um, I also don't really play that way, so I don't usually use it that way. But I think it—I think it's an interesting role. I think it gathers information. Uh, it can be a good bluff checker. Um, once again, it's the—it's one of those roles that I find on BMR especially is most likely to catch itself a demon or catch itself a minion out. Right? I chose so and so. Um, it's so potent that that's why it was on BMR is because you have to have a lot of roles. Or a lot of ways for people to die. Um, and you know, it's like, oh, well, maybe it was a Shabaloth. Maybe I did. Maybe you are what you say you are. Mm. And it turns out, no, I, g- I gambled. Um, I gambled the demon as the as their bluff and caught him out. So it's it becomes pretty potent in that sense. Um, I mean, yes and no, Ty. Yes and no, Ty. I mean, even well, if I'm not going to say on- yes, it's a C. I'm going to say it's going to be it's going to be better than for the flower girl for me but that's fine really no i can't say so yeah. i mean even if you look at it on bmr right a there's lots of ways other people could die including themselves there's lots of ways people could not die innkeeper you know uh tea lady etc protecting mm-hmm. the gambler at night not realizing they're actually the gambler so like it's just it's a bit of a it's i don't think it's a, i don't think it's a great role at all even in bmr i don't think it's a b or a tier character townsfolk in, in bmr Personally. Well, I want to agree with you there, and I'm going to speak last. Okay. So I'm going to say... C. Sorry, just, well. <laughs> B. We'll put it as B. 
Oh man, really? It's, you think it deserves beat? Okay. I think every I I have to represent the interests of people that aren't you, and I know that's 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 suspicious to you. Chat. Uh, chat. There's a lot of people that enjoy gambling. Chat. Come on, chime in. B or C. Help us out. Help 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 me to help you prove that Tyler's wrong and that it's not. Have we put anything, anything in C yet? I don't no. think we have. It's no. So come on. Do you chime in C? Chime in C. No. Oh okay. <laughs> I don't Look at this. Look we've at got, this. We've got oh. more rolls coming. Look at this, Ty. <laughs> Marshall's just trying to make up with you for his, his vigor mortis take. <laughs> he's just saying C for vigor mortis. There Ooh. are more rolls coming, so it doesn't have to be in C yet. Yeah, we, we, got, we got. I I can tell you. I can tell you right now. I think I can see a roll on this list right now. The other half that I would put in the C tier. Hmm. Um, and feel just fine about. Oh shit. I, okay. I'm worried about what the fuck you think that role is because all of these roles that are coming up are at least B to me. Wow. So you there have you a, a. It looks it, like. Does it, it mean that townsfolk are easier to write than the abilities? Because if if I mean I know that these are specifically the the everyday townsfolk that each day each night, to what's called it, um. But does that mean that that type of ability? From a game design perspective, is easier to well, get right if well, we're thinking that a lot of them are sort of. We'll have to get Steve on it one week and ask him, Steve, what do you find easier writing for, evil or good? And if it's good, is Townsfolk the easiest out of all of them? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Out of the ones out, when I've been like creating custom characters, the demons seem the easiest ones to me. Like go that's ahead and create that shit. Because of who you are, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you Well, I think that's one of the things though is that if you if you have an idea for what demons you want to put on the, on a on a script or and I don't want to talk about his design Steve's design philosophy because that would be pretty presumptuous of me. But in, in terms of what you're looking at it's, away. it seems to me that if you make the demons and the minions first, the evil team first, you can go, "Oh, this town's these town's folk roles would be interesting and they they would be very competitive or they would be they would slot well with that." Um, we are seeing some of the experimental roles, which I don't think, and that's probably why they're not on a base three script or we're not in that mode, but like something like the alchemist is hard to balance. You would have to really, you have to do a lot of work, put a lot of things onto a script to make it go. Ah, uh, yeah. Because minion roles are just more powerful. So yeah. I know there's not a conversation about the alchemist, but the, to your point, I mean, um, I think, they made a lot more townsfolk roles that are effective, so it may have been a little bit easier than the minions and the and the demons. Or maybe they just go, I don't have to make any more. I've already made four. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm tired now. I'm spent. So, well, that's I mean, a good question. Though. I mean, when you're creating 13 townsfolk versus four demons, I guess there is a more higher chance for there to be good townsfolk. <laughs> I wonder if we're going to yeah. have everything in B and A's and S tiers when it's moving on to some of the other categories. Like, I mean, BT is not good, to be fair. It is in the bottom half of, of the ranking in, that doesn't go beyond C. In this... In this... <laughs> in this... In this scripting or ranking, it is definitely, it is definitely not good to be B. But I don't see anything wrong with Well, it, you know, it, and I would say that most each night roles are probably going to have a more favorable... We're trying to compare them against each other. So if you compare it set in a vacuum, it would it be better to be an each night info role than the soldier? And I think most people, not saying all people, but a lot of people would probably be like, yes, it would be better to be to get information every night than sit there and just hope the demon tries to kill you and then lie until they attempt to. And then once you don't die, everybody goes, Ah, you're just a demon bluffing as the soldier, you suck a kill and go, God damn it, I did all of this for you. I did it for you, town, and then they kill you. Yes, that probably feels a little bit better to get information. So I think by the, by that nature, they'll be a little bit more, have a more favorable view. But all right, so we're pretty much at time then. Yeah, but so, but so is it a B? Ty, if you really want it to be B, I will let it be B. If you you gave okay. me provisionally chambermaid as B. I will give you gambler provisionally as B. Provisional, and I would also point that this is just another another data point that says Adam hates. Bad Moon Rising. And that'll be the end of our <laughs> podcast. I appreciate y'all watching with us. It's great to spend our lunchtime with you. All right. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. 